Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna K770 concrete saw or power cutter. Customer complaint is that it leaks fuel. So let's look inside the tank and see if there's any fuel left in it. And it's really kind of hard to see to the bottom of these tanks, but there's a little bit laying down there. Well, if there is a hole in a tank, it's not on the bottom. And I'm just investigating that right now. Let's put some fuel in it and see if maybe there's a hole or a crack a little higher up in the level of the tank. Still nothing leaking out. Now it looks like I'm starting to get a little bit of a wet spot here in the handle. Not sure yet where it's coming from. If the tank is cracked. The closer I look, I realize that the fuel's rolling out from underneath the carburetor. So we're going to pull the top cover and the air filter off and take a look and see what there is to see. Three screws hold this top cover on. Two screws hold the air filter down. Pretty simple. Then there's a rubber air boot here that's got to come out of the way and four more screws. Now when you pull this last cover off, be mindful of the primer bulb. Kind of protrudes through the cover, so you got to push it in while you're lifting the cover out of the way. All right, there's our air filter base. And we're trying to look underneath it here, but we just can't get a good view. Although I can see at this point that it's really wet underneath there. Let's get this carburetor right out of the way. There's a single screw that holds this down. Flange on the bottom of this intake runner that you set it in and then you put the screw in there and holds everything in place. Alright, now what I'm seeing is a broken fuel line. The line is busted, cracked, right where the end of the barb is on the carburetor. I don't know if it had a sharp bend in there, um, or if it was damaged during installation, but it's cracked right at the end of the barb. And the rest of the line feels pretty good. I mean, this saw isn't that old anyway. So we're going to just trim off this broken part. And then we're going to have to pull just a little bit of line through the tank to make up for what we cut off. And I think to give it a little bit more slack so maybe it's not pulling so funky on that barb. I mean, it was possible that it was just a sharp bend right there. Although it's kind of hard to look at it while everything's assembled to see if it's got a bend in it or not. So now you'll notice this uh, little nut here. It's got a weird shape to it. There's six of those nuts, three on each side. And those hold those various covers down in place. While you're moving this saw around after you've got the screws out, those will fall out. So keep track of them. Now on the other side of the carburetor, there's a short fuel line that runs from the carburetor to the purge bulb. This hose appears to be uh, a little, you know, not a very good 
push on connection to the primer bulb and it's getting a little bit hard so we're going to replace that as well this line is kind of a pain in the butt it's just not long enough um, and it makes reassembly a little difficult I mean it's certainly doable done a lot of them it's just a pain here's our throttle linkage Look into the carburetor and it's just going to snap into the trigger lever once we get to that point. So first thing we want to do is put our fuel line on the carburetor. And then we're going to snap our throttle rod onto the throttle lever. And then you want to be mindful of the choke lever. And it's got to sit in this little saddle on the blue choke linkage. It's very easy to put this all together and not have that choke lever in the right spot. And then you got to take everything back apart and get it all relined back up again. At least that's what I've heard. All right, I just double checked to make sure I had all six of those nuts in place. And now I'm just putting an eyeball on the little fuel line that goes to the purge bulb. Just a sanity check, make sure it's on there. And we're pumping the purge bulb and, and it's uh, pumping fuel. So we're good to go there. Now once we've got the uh, the intake plate Sitting in the saddle on the cylinder, we can run this last screw in here and just double check and make sure that that plate's sitting flush on the cylinder. There's no leaks or it's not in there crooked. Again, checking to make sure I got all those nuts in place. Pushing the primer bulb in a little bit as I drop this cover on so that it clears the bulb. Pulling the boot through and getting that lined up. This brings fresh air from the, uh, where the starter brings the air in off the flywheel and pushes it up into the air filter. Get these screws torqued down. And uh, you have to look at these nuts sometimes and get them so they line up in the center of the hole. Otherwise you'll be turning these screws and they won't be hitting the nuts. And then we'll put our top cover on. So that's all I have for you on the Husqvarna K770 power cutter broken fuel line. Thanks for watching. Later.